Hello everyone, Back Photography here, back with another video all about natural light and how you can make the most of the lighting available to you in a photo shoot. We're not going to be using any lighting equipment, we're not going to be using any modifiers, no reflectors, nothing at all. We're only going to be looking at how you can make the most out of the natural light without any equipment used. Now I believe that with a bit of practice you can take beautiful portraits without the need for any extra lighting equipment and of course you can always have extra lighting equipment and that can be super handy and convenient and gives you a lot of flexibility to get the perfect lighting condition for your shoot. But you don't need to use these things to make beautiful portraits if you know how to frame your scene so that the lighting works for you instead of against you. So we're going to be talking about the best positions of the light for portraits, the best time to shoot portraits. We're going to go through all the equipment that I like to use for natural light portraits. And then we're going to go into Photoshop and have a look at a few ways that you can make the light look more aesthetically pleasing in your photos. So this is tip number one and I think it's the most important tip when shooting natural light portraits and it's choosing the time of day that you're going to shoot. I think that the perfect time of day is going to be about an hour to 45 minutes before the sun sets. And this is because the sun is going to be its lowest in the sky. And this is really important because the lower the sun is, the less harsh the light is going to be in your scene. Also, if the sun is lower in the sky, you're able to hide it behind buildings or trees or other things so that you can have more diffuse soft light in your scene instead of having that harsh sunlight shooting down onto your model. And I think the very best time of the day in terms of lighting is going to be dependent on where exactly you're shooting. If you're shooting near the beach, you're going to have the sun setting all the way down to the horizon. So the best time, in my opinion, to shoot at the beach is 10 to 15 minutes before the sun completely disappears behind the horizon. But it's going to be different if you're shooting in a mountainous area or if you're shooting around trees. So I would say, typically speaking, the best time to shoot is anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour and a half before sunset. And so my next tip is something that you can't really control but it makes a big difference to natural light portraits and that is cloud cover in the sky. When there are clouds hiding the sun, the, the clouds act like a really large softbox diffusing the light over the entire scene. So it's a really great time to shoot when there are big fluffy clouds in the sky. Now if you can't find any clouds in the sky or it's a really clear day and you can't wait for the sun to move in front of a cloud, you can always hide in the shade so that you get that nice diffuse light. It's not going to be quite as good as shooting when the sun is going through a cloud, but it's better than shooting in really harsh sunlight. So my third tip is something that I think most photographers never learn but just kind of figure out as they go along. And that is with natural light you have two main ways of taking portraits and one of them is with the sun coming directly at the subject's face and the other one is where they are backlit and the sun is behind them and being used as a rim light. So the first one where the sun is in front of them tends to be best when there's a lot of cloud cover and you can get a really nice diffuse lighting on a model's face. But if it's a really harsh sunlight, you have to wait for the sun to go down a little bit lower so it starts getting golden and yellow and beautiful. And then you can use that as a really lovely warm rim light on your subject. So now I'm going to rapid fire some easy tips for you to improve your portraits in natural light. One of them is to make sure that the light source, which in most cases is the sun, is 45 degrees above and to the side of your model so that you get some nice three dimension to the lighting conditions on the model's face. One side will be dark and one side will be light. The next tip is to have your model tilt their head up a little bit when they're facing the light source. And that's basically so that parts of their face can catch the light a little bit better than others and provide some nice contouring on the face. The next step is if you're shooting backlit light, do not shoot directly into the sun. Otherwise, you're going to get a low contrast image and have difficulties in post-production bringing back the color and vibrance and shadows back into the image. Okay, so let's talk about equipment. The equipment that I like to use for natural light portraits, it's all really gonna be about the lens because the camera body doesn't really make that much difference. The lens that I like to use is the Sigma 35mm f1.4, the Sigma 50mm f1.4, and the Sigma 85mm 1.4. And I really like these lenses because they're prime lenses, so you can shoot at a super low aperture and really blur out the background. And this is going to be particularly useful for shooting those backlight portraits where we have that beautiful golden light in the background. We can make it really warm and soft and also separate the subject from the background as well. And when you're shooting in natural light, the most difficult thing is to separate your subject from the background because you don't have as much flexibility to do that with the lighting. So that is why I like to use primes and that's why I like to shoot at low apertures. 
So before we jump into Photoshop, if you're enjoying this content so far, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button so that I can make as much content for you guys as possible and turn this YouTube channel into my full-time job. I really appreciate all of you that subscribe, so thank you very much for subscribing. So we're going to do a full edit on this photo, but we're going to focus mainly on the lighting. You can see here that the lighting on this side of Katie's face is much brighter than on this side. And that is the basis of a good portrait in my opinion, but I think that it's a bit underexposed. So what we can do first of all, is just brighten it up, adding a bit more exposure until we get a nice skin tone. You can see here that the exposure is about correct on the skin, particularly this area here. So we don't want to go any brighter than that. We want to keep it at about that brightness right there. You can already see that because we've done that, we're already getting a nice exposure in the eyes as well. Now, if a part of the scene is overexposed now, we, in my opinion, I like to change things um, around the exposure on the face so we can drop the highlights to remove any overexposure in the uh, turtleneck shirt here. The next thing we can do to make the lighting more pleasing is change the white balance. So just getting it to a nice skin tone again and a nice white balance. I think that's about right there. Then what we can do is we can get this paintbrush tool and just add in a little bit more um, brightness into the areas um, that we want to make a little bit brighter. Now that's obviously way too much. So we can just turn that down a little bit and then put it maybe up a little bit just to uh, make the background a little bit more bright and a little bit more colorful as well. So let's go through this photo and just edit it like we would a normal photo. The first thing I'm going to do is just drop the clarity and just remove some of the clarity in the skin. And that's basically just to do um, a bit of a smoothing so that we can make the skin look as nice and smooth as possible. And this is something you can do when you're shooting in harsh light as well. This is going to make a big difference to the highlights and shadows in the skin. So you can see this is where you're highlighted. I might just add a little bit more here as well and a little bit just there too. Just remove those changes so you can see where the changes have been made and this is just what we're doing with the clarity slider. I like to move it to about 40 points and then just add a little bit more of the brightest whites back in just so we're not losing any of the contrast in the skin. The next thing we can do to make the portrait stand out in natural light is just adding a little bit more exposure into the eyes. Now when you're shooting with off-camera flash you can position your um, light in the perfect position to illuminate the eyes, but you can't always do this when shooting natural light. So it's just nice to add a little bit more uh, shadows and exposure just to make the eyes pop a little bit as well. I'm just going to add some clarity into the hair. This isn't really something that applies to natural light portraits, but just adding some clarity in makes the highlights and the shadows in the hair a bit bolder and just makes the hair pop a little bit more from the scene. One thing I really like to do to natural light portraits is remove a bit of the blues so that the image is not looking um, as blue in the shadows as it could. And I think that makes a big difference. Just adding, just removing a little bit of the blue to make um, the image look a bit more warm. Okay, so that's everything we're gonna do in Camera Raw. Actually, one final thing we're gonna do in Camera Raw, I'm just gonna jump back in, and that is adding light a little bit more to the face just to make it stand out from the rest of the scene. So we'll just jump back into Camera Raw there for a second and use this paintbrush tool here just to add a little bit more light. And this is something I like to do to my natural light portraits just to make it look like I have a little bit more control of the light like so. So just adding a little bit to the side that's already the brighter side can really make a big difference and um, really add some more dimension to the image by adding more light in as well. So that's pretty much everything that we're gonna do for this photo. Um, a very quick and easy edit, something that you can do at home, something that doesn't require much editing at all. So let me know what you think of this final photo. I'm gonna leave a link to this photo in the description in raw format so that you can edit it in your own time if you would like. I'm also going to leave a link to Katie's Instagram and my Instagram as well. So if you'd like to show me the edits that you do on this photo, I really do enjoy having a look at them and discussing those edits with you. And also, if you have a look at the raw file from this image, there's also going to be a repository of all the raw files from all the photo shoots that I've done in recent years. So you can feel free to go into the description and edit any of those that you like. I'm also going to leave in the description a link to all the equipment that I used from this photo shoot. So that's my camera equipment, my camera body, my camera lens, all the stuff that I used to record this video as well. So check that out in the description if you're looking to buy some more camera equipment as well. 
I know I said in my last video that this was going to be, uh, that my last video was going to be the last one for a while, but I managed to squeeze this photo shoot in just in the nick of time before my city locked down. So I really appreciate you watching this video and thank you very much for tuning in once again. I'm not sure when I'll be producing a, another video after this. It might be a little bit of time, but I look forward to getting out there and shooting again and making some more content for you in the future. So thank you very much for tuning in once again and I will see you in the next video.